This programme has been recorded and is not live. You're no longer able to interact with the show, so please do not call or text as you may still be charged. Hope you enjoy the show. Good evening. Welcome to the first Nolan TV show of 2013. It's nice to be back. Here's what we've got for you tonight. As loyalist anger over the Union flag row runs into its seventh week, are we any closer to bringing the crisis to an end? And an extraordinary act of human kindness in their first television interview together since a failed kidney transplant, Joe Brawley and Shane Finnegan will tell their remarkable story in this studio. Well, thank you very much for joining us. What we will be discussing in this studio tonight, it's really important, we know this, for all of us here in Northern Ireland. And I know that there are so many of you who want to have your say. Now, there's no point ringing us tonight. We're not live. You still can get in touch, though. Here's how you can do so. Email nolan at bbc.co.uk. You can tweet me, at Stephen Nolan. It's hashtag BBC Nolan on Twitter. Or you can text us, 81771. Text will be charged at your standard message rate. Sectarian hand-to-hand -hand fighting, plastic bullets fired, water cannons deployed, cars hijacked and set alight, petrol bombs, fireworks, bricks and bottles thrown, over 100 police officers injured, 85 people charged in connection with the robbing. And why? Because of this flag? And how many times a year it flies at Belfast City Hall? In a minute, we'll be discussing the fallout from all of this, the financial impact and what needs to be done to make it stop. But first, let's look back at some of the images of Northern Ireland that have been beamed around the world over the last number of weeks. never been peace here. The Good Friday Agreement was a false peace. We have all been walked over. Walked over and now it's time for the Protestant people to take us down once and for all. I'm not able to call the people off. That's the responsibility of others and they need to step up to that mark and they need to step up to it now. We want equality. We want the culture that we have to be respected. Once you move, they'll be back out again and doing what they normally do. Go on camera, I've just been hit there now. Are you alright? I'm alright. And the people that are calling for protest have to take a step back now and think about the damage they are causing. I support people's right to have a peaceful protest. I do not support their right to be throwing petrol bombs and stones at the PSMI. We need to show young people that doing this kind of stuff really just harms all of us. It's disgraceful. This kind of lawless violence is unacceptable. There is a better positive alternative uh, that will take us all beyond street protest to something that delivers on the, the political agenda that people have. It's doing serious damage to the economy and to the image of our city. Well, obviously, many of you will have differing views as you're watching that, wherever you're living in Northern Ireland. Let's try to get a sense of those different views 
tonight through this television programme and what we can do about it. Jim Wilson, I want to start uh, with you, if we can. Um, what is the anger about? Explain the anger within loyalism to me. Stephen, I've been telling you in these programmes for the last three years about the insatiable desire of Sinn Féin to erode my culture and everything that I hold dear. And unfortunately, it comes down to uh, inquiry after inquiry. £200 million spent on Bloody Sunday. We knew that wasn't going to be enough. So they decided they want to charge the, the, the soldiers after that. Uh, the Prime Minister apologises to the Finucane family. Not enough. A type of inquiry into that. What about my community who, blo uh, Bloody Friday, in a skill, Le Mans, I can go through a list of them. So it's not where, about the flag? No, no, let, let me finish. You ask me a question, I'm going to try and elaborate and tell you where it's coming from. It's all about a whole litany of things together. It's a whole litany of things. You take the, the Parades Commission and how the Parades Commission have been operating. You take the, the historic inquiries. Last year, I think the, the numbers were 92 people up to that date had been, or being charged or went through the, the system. 89 of those Protestants, when 65% of the atrocities were called, caused by Jerry and his people in those days, days long ago. <laughs> Everyone, I've been doing interviews all week with journalists from everywhere in the world and trying to explain to them, this was the straw that broke the camel's back. This is not down to a flag. If the flag issue had probably come up at the start of the Troubles, our people may well have accepted that as part yeah. of what we had to do to move this country forward and to move on. Yeah, but Jim, so, but, 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 but here's Stephen, your problem. Stephen, hold on a minute. Stephen, no, hold Stephen on. are doing this along okay. with the Alliance but, but, and they have created this mayhem but it's the not. Streets. But that's not the message that's going around the world. What you've just said there, many people might embrace. It's not the message that's going around the world. Because whether you like it or not, and I know that you condemn violence, and Jimmy Bryson, let me put this to you. When there are protesters out in the ground, and you might have really, really valid arguments, you might have really valid views. You see, as soon as one of them has a petrol bomb in their hand, that's the message that goes around the world. Once someone bricks the police, that's the image that goes around the world. And your message is lost. Can you not see that? Stephen, I think we've been clear from the very start that peaceful protests are the way to go. Now, what the media do is focus in on the minority who may pick up a petrol bomb. Now, we see Sinn Féin here, Jerry, and his comrades, sworn on the world stage as great peacemakers. I don't see you focusing in on the dissidents and entwining them with Sinn Féin, because it's the same thing. If one member of their community... <laughs> Now, Charlie and as people say that they're moving on the peace process, so if members of their community are out bombing people, shooting people, murdering people, you know, Jerry called for me the other week to be questioned over a, a Facebook comment that gets a bit rich from somebody who shot a prison officer in the head. But, uh, <laughs> it's very simplistic to equate everybody together. Over 85 to 90% of these protests have been totally, totally peaceful, and we need to focus on that. We need to focus on uh, our young people who've got politicised and who now want to get involved in politics out of the back of this. Let's look at the positive side of this. Don't always focus on the negative, Stephen. All, right. All I would say to you is this, and then, Jerry Kelly, I want you to respond right, to this. Hold on, and I want you to have an opportunity to challenge everyone around this table, all right? But I just want to nail this. When you talk about the media, for goodness sake, be informed about it, all right? Jerry Kelly and his mates, I've asked him very difficult questions. In the last series, I, I put a question to you that some people see as a bomber in a suit. I have said to Martin McGuinness, how many times did he pull the trigger in the past? He refused to answer it. You are in la-la land if you're suggesting that the brilliant journalists in this country, newspaper journalists, television journalists, radio journalists, whoever they are, we all try to do a balanced decent job. Now, I don't want this to be about us tonight. I want you to have an opportunity Stephen, to challenge them. Stephen. And do you, hold on, hold on, do you acknowledge that these people have had enough, that they see what terror brought you, they see what it bought Sinn Féin, and now they're sick and tired of you criticising them when they've had enough? Well, terror didn't You're moralising about terror. Well, I, I've never, I don't think, used the issue of uh, what is moral and what isn't. I mean, I've just listened to Jim and I've just listened to Jim and I still don't understand what they're at. Is, is, are the protests now about Sinn Féin? Because if they're about Sinn Féin, what are you doing it? 
at the offices of, of Alliance. Have Alliance been the anime over the last 30 years as well? That, that wasn't a I mean, then, then you said, well, well let, me, let me finish. Let me talk. Let, 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 let me talk. Hold on. Hold on. I'll give so you a chance. I promise you a chance. You're complaining that you are oppressed because Pat Fanukin's family want an inquiry? No, that's it's not ridiculous. No. No, that's is there complaining true. because Same. there was an inquiry? Is there complaining because there's inquiries in the bloody Sunday, which was the state uh, murdering 14 people? But, but, I, I know, but, but, but if you want to come and see, if I'm the problem, then come to me. You have to make up your mind what the problem is. If, if I'm the problem, then what are you right. doing? Okay, let what me let, let me let, let me let you. What are you doing One protesting? Second. If it's me, what are you doing protesting over the flag? And what are you doing protesting? All right, at David, One second. At David One second. I promise. I promise you'll I get a chance. The problem. But I need to. I need you to put your hand up, and I promise you'll get a chance. Jim Wilson. A, a direct question right. to Jerry no, Kelly. No, but let me elaborate. A direct question. But I need to tell you. You know, you need to get. You asked me for the feelings out in the street. Sure. And I'll give you something that just happened this week, which is sensitivity. We had the Chief Constable coming out and apologising to the residents and the people of George Town. This is very perfect. I was asked to go out in the streets by the police. Myself and my grandson were battened by the police. Women were beat to the ground. Other community workers were beat by the police. Did he, the police privately apologised to us. Did the Chief Constable come out and apologise to my community? No, he didn't. And that's why we feel sat in That's the stuff that's happening there that we're not accepting. And, and I'll give you the third point that I wanted to make, and, that, and they can close me down because there's a lot of people want to say. Jerry Adams came on, I want to ask you a question, Jerry. Jerry Adams came on the TV and said, There's no riders in the short strand, there's nobody three stones, or there's nobody having to go to the police, let me finish. And there was nobody, what uh, 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 Bally Club was on. Do you agree with that, Jerry? Well, he didn't say that, Jim. And let me he say, said, I heard the interview. <laughs> I heard the interview. <laughs> okay, let, let, let me say this, because in, in, in fairness to you, Jim, it's very hard. There's the photographs. No, it's fair enough. But, but look. Well, Paul Kelly. I need to make up in two, Stephen. You can make up in two. Let me respond to you. I want to get a lot out of this programme tonight. Let me respond to you. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going to answer the question. I, I can tell you this before we go any further. Whatever equality impact was done in the audience here, and he's looked at again. Uh, it's well packed. Oh. Now, oh. now, oh. Jim, oh. in, fairness, in fairness to you, it, it is a brave step to stand at your community when there is a tax and saying it was started over here. You know, so I, I'll give you credit for that. Are you saying to me, Gary is there ever... But, not, but, but why should I take it? That's OK. Yeah. Well, why should I take my glasses off? I don't even understand that. You know? If you're going to make a point... Listen, listen, well, it's listen. Hard. It's let's hard get, to answer hold on, a question. Hold on. If I'm let's let's get question. something out of this tonight. Let them... You've challenged him. Yes. What's your response? Jimmy Bryson, do you, have, do you have a specific question? Here's your opportunity to Jerry Kelly. What is it? Well, well, come well, Jim's already asked a well question. let me ask a question here to you. Uh, what we hear, Jerry, is constantly our people are told about this peace process. The young Protestants, <laughs> we, we have to accept this peace process. Now, the very start, and process by its definition, has a start and an end. Nobody's ever told us, or the DUP's never come out and told us, what's the end of this peace process? At what point is the peace process complete? So, in your eyes, Sinn Féin, at what point it's complete? Because I'll tell you what we see, Jay. You use all these nice words like equality, shared future. It's all lovely, it's all fly, it sounds fantastic across the world, but see, see in all sincerity, we just view that. They, those are weapons of war to you, Jay, that you use against our community. And the young Protestants are no longer going to pussyfoot around Sinn Féin and allow victim makers to perpetrate oh, themselves as victims. <laughs> You can read militant sta statements, Jimmy, and, and I know about militant statements. Well, but here's, but here's, but here, I know it, right? I know. I, I mean, I've, have I ever, I know my background. Everybody else in the room knows my background, right? I was involved in a conflict. We went into the peace process. I think we've done very well out of that peace process. We are moving ahead. But, but, well, listen, I know, I know. But Jimmy asked, Jimmy. Do you understand? No, I understand. Is there anger? a legitimate anger? No. Yeah. Listen, I understand anger, but you have to work out the difference between what is perception and feeds anger and what is reality. And here's the reality, because you talk about equality, you say, I shouldn't talk about equality. Equality should be a neutral word. I'm happy for you to use equality as much as I use equality. I'm happy to have equality. But when you say that the Protestant working class, and, and the Protestant working class, working class people throughout, whether they're Protestant, Catholic, Unionist, or Nationalist deserve, uh, a, a chance to move ahead. But when you talk to me about, you know, the Protestant people are, are, are 
the disadvantage that they're suffering and all that. It's not that I don't believe you. I know that Protestant working class people are, are, are disadvantaged. But if you take the top 20 wards of disadvantage on the statistics let out by independent people, 36 okay. of the 40 wards are in Catholic and national studies. 15 years ago, Jared. Okay. 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 One sec, one sec, one sec. No, one no, one sec. It doesn't start one anymore. It doesn't start anymore, It doesn't start anymore, Jared. But that's used all the time. It doesn't start anymore because Jim. most of us in Protestant Jim. areas are in, we're, reality, and they're Jim. connected. All of our estates in East Jim. Belfast Jim. are connected to bigger. Jim. So that doesn't start well, anymore. One second, one second, Jim. If there's a Protestant area suffering from that, Listen, listen, listen. For this program to work tonight, right? I just need you all to respect me and let me That's chair. That's what I need you to do. Right. There's a guy at the back here with your hand up. I want to try to get as many in here as possible. Go ahead, sir. Me, Luke yeah. Jumper. Yes, sir. Jerry, you're sitting there talking about, you're, you're happy to talk about equality then. Why, after advice from the Equality Commission, did Sinn Féin proceed the name of Children's Playground after an IRA terrorist in, in New Inn Moore? This is the Raymond McNeese okay, part. That's the McCreeth Park. And, Why and, after the and what does that do? What does that? How do you feel about that? What does that do to you when you are being asked to compromise with the nationalist community and with Sinn Féin? What does that do to you when well, you well, hear that very, happen? The very fact that, that anyone would want to call a children's park after a terrorist sickens me to my gut, Stephen. And well, for Jerry to sit there and say to people in this audience and, and, and the guests that he's happy to talk about equality, answer my question, Jerry. Why well, I will. after? A report from the Equality Commission advising you not to do so. Your party continued and named the children's playground after an IRA terrorist. Well, do, do. do you understand that Republicans and Nationalists have looked upon British soldiers and looked upon the RUC and B Specials and others in the same way as you look upon the IRA? Do you understand that? Because the difficulty, because, because, because the, difficulty here, the difficulty here is the debate over the last six weeks has been around Britishness. Right? You are forgetting about Irishness. You are forgetting that as we sit here today, in Belfast City Hall, over 95% of all the emblems are about Britishness. Jerry, None of them are about Irishness. And, and, the city, and the city of Belfast is a shared city. The statistics are now the demographics are it is a but Jerry, Jerry, it is it is a specific question that if, that if Sinn Fein has tapped into the sensitivities of Northern Ireland, then you know that, that naming okay. a children's play and, park and, well, look, after the likes of Raymond McCreish is sensitive well, and then all, the, some of these people okay. have to listen to you but use nobody, the word equality. But, but I, I, I don't know Jared. exactly what that's to do with the quality. Well, I'm trying to answer the question. Well, you're you're, you're, you're swinging round the bush. You're in the playground. playground. Swings and right? roundabouts. Get well, straight to the point. Well, <laughs> <laughs> like yourself. I ask you a direct question. Very quickly. I ask you a direct question. Very quickly. If I go through loyalist areas, it is full of loyalist I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. It's full of loyalist regalia. I'm okay because that's what that community, that part of our community wants, and that's okay. If you go through a nice story, you may find many tricolours. Now, in the uh, park in Uri, where the was called after Raymond McCreish, who to Republicans is looked upon as a hero, who is somebody who died in hunger strike. Right. Well, well, who is somebody who, is somebody who died? Is somebody who died for his country? You may look upon it from that point of view, but you need to understand. You need to understand that people died for the tricolour as well. People died for United Ireland. Okay. People give up their okay. lives for their Even. people okay. as well. Okay. Okay. Even. No. One Even. second. One second. I can't look. <clears throat> Again, let me make this clear. I want to get as many of you in as possible. If you shout at me, I'm not coming anywhere near you. And I promise I'll come to you later in the programme. Geoffrey Donaldson, there is clearly, and you have heard it on my radio programme and other outlets, there is clearly a disconnect where people in working class, loyalist areas feel that you and your party are not representing them anymore that you don't understand their frustration and their anger and that you are working with Sinn Féin now. It's easy for you guys and you've left them behind. Now, do you at least acknowledge that they feel like that and you've let it get to that stage? Well, Steve and I wish working with Sinn Féin was easy. It isn't. Um, we have a mandate for where we are today. We've stood for election. Um, we have been put forward on the basis of the stance that we have taken. Uh, in inner East Belfast, the area to which you refer, 
uh, at the most recent election, which is just over a year ago, Stephen. The DUP was by far the largest party in that area. We still have a lot of support in that area. As for being disconnected, Stephen, I invite you, come to my constituency. I will take you into the loyalist areas of my constituency and I will let the community tell you the work that I'm doing day and daily in working class Protestant areas, uh, tackling the issues like social deprivation, like educational underachievement. Come to the Lagan View Enterprise Centre in Lisburn. Look at the Sure Start scheme that we helped to get funding for. So those people for that children. are out peacefully so, protesting, Stephen, they've, they've got it wrong. There's nothing to learn. No, There's nothing to listen because to. Because Stephen, that's not why they're on the streets protesting. Jim. Um, uh, and Jamie have outlined to you the kind of issues that people are really angry about and we need to understand this. You see, the peace process that I signed up to, uh, John Hume for years told us that we couldn't have majority rule in Northern Ireland. It had to be about consensus politics. <coughs> David Ford's political career has been built on the notion of consensus politics. What did we get in Belfast City Hall? We got a reversion to direct rule, nationalist style, aided and abetted by the Alliance Party. Absolutely no consensus. not. No. Absolutely David, that not. is the truth. There was not a single unionist uh, councillor voted for the decision to take the flag down. You spurned the unionist community in that decision. You ignored the views of the yes, unionist sir. community in that decision. Let him reply to that point, final, then you can make another point. One final point. The equality impact assessment that was carried out by Belfast City uh, mm. Council, as I understand it, 95% of the people who responded, 95% said they didn't want to change the flag situation on Belfast City Hall, yet you ignored that. Uh, David, with respect, the decision in City Hall was not about a consensus. It was about going okay. back to the bad old days yeah. of one side dominating the other. Jeffrey has made a number of points. First of all, an equality impact assessment is not about adding up numbers. It's about seeing what the real issues of equality and balance are. And if a petition was collected on the day of the Covenant Parade, which added to the signatures on one side, that's not about equality. The key issue was that nationalists proposed the removal of the Union flag entirely in a recommendation from a committee. Alliance on the basis of the equality advice which is applied to other councils and indeed the same advice as was accepted by DUP members in Lisburn when they not didn't true, vote. David, when not they true, David. Not, not vote. true, David. Not true. When the, DUP flag, members, the flag was changed in Lisburn before the DUP ever became. We had two councillors right. on Lisburn City Council okay. when the flag situation okay. was changed. We have not carried out an EQIA um, uh, uh, as you have suggested, let's, David. Let's, so let's, let's get our facts right. Let's let's right. As I was trying to say, let's get our facts right. when in Lisburn... When in Lisburn City Council, the agreement was made to fly the flag on designated days and two current DUP MLAs, Edwin Poots and Jonathan Craig, were members of that council and did not vote against designated days. That's not so true, what, David. That is not well, true. Well, that, that is the information I true. have been well, given from Lisburn. Then you should check your information, David. Let me tell you the truth. The DUP put forward a proposal to have the flag flown 365 days a year. We were the only party on the council who voted for that. The rest voted against us. We didn't have a majority, and, and therefore we couldn't get it through. And that on the is basis, the reality of well, the situation. I'm informed on the basis of the equality advice. You did not object because people knew they would have been so. You stand charged. over but the way true. your party but, voted. Even well, hold on. Let's go back to Belfast. Here. Let's you stand over the way your party voted with Belfast City Hall. Look at what's happened let's as go, a result. Let's go back to Belfast. Nationalists proposed the removal of the Union flag entirely. There was equality advice which said that the best arrangement was that the flag was flown on designated days, exactly the same as the circumstances in which DUP MLAs work on Parliament buildings. And on the basis of that advice, Alliance put forward an amendment to the nationalist motion, and, and, and right, that okay. was agreed so part as the, the quality assessment and all of that. What do you what do you read out of what is actually when you? see the protesters, a lot of them peaceful protesters, and you see them stand in front of the City Hall now and the message they're sending you. Do you learn anything from that? I learned that we are a divided society. <coughs> I learned we have difficult <coughs> issues to face if we're to try to produce a balanced arrangement. I also know that there are more nationalist councillors than unionists in Belfast. <coughs> and that in the context of that, the Alliance proposal for designated days was the right balanced recognition that Belfast is within the United Kingdom,
but Belfast is a divided city and Belfast has to be a shared city. That was the necessary way, that was the only way we could move forward. And when you talk about what happened okay. as a result, Still let's be flag. clear okay. what was and okay. what wasn't peaceful. Colin, Colin McDevitt, I'll come to you in a second. Where's Chris Donnelly tonight? Hello to you, Chris. What's your assessment of where we're at here? Stephen, I think the, uh, the existence of the Loyalist flag protest movement is an indictment of the political leadership of unionism and their failure to educate their grassroots oh. as to what the Good Friday Agreement and the logical outworkings of that Good Friday Agreement was going to be about. about consensus. It was going to be about. Well, let, let me get you to every second. Consensus. It was going to be about. That's what it's about. Well, let's 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 in 2002, they built a new civic council. They built, or they named two bridges after Queen's Bridge, Jubilee Bridge. In 2006, 2007, they gave land away free in the centre of Lisbon so that a UDR monument could be built there. How does that reach out to your nationalists? How does that reach out to the nationalist residents of Lisbon? What does that say about Lisbon being a shared city? It says absolutely nothing. You still in Lisbon have to have, have never had a Sinn Féin Lord Mayor. Yet in every single council that is majority nationalists across the six counties, there have been unionist mayors because nationalists have implemented power sharing. So if you're talking about building a shared society, if you're talking about a shared future, if you're talking about equality, then what you need to do is talk to people like Jamie, talk to Jim Wilson, because until you preach the consistent message to these people, what we're going to get is people who foolishly believe that they could take us back to the stormy days of old where this, this, this society reflected okay. just yeah. the model okay. cultural British I, I will let you reply. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. And, and, well, and then we'll put into the audience very quickly. You talk about the stormy days of old. The stormy days of old was about majority rule. What did we get on Belfast City Council? We didn't get a track We got We got we majority. Got, we got, we got, we got, we got, are you going to let me speak? Let's let him, sh sh we got, let's, let's we, let him reply. We got majority let's rule at City Hall. That's what we didn't. You talked about the Good Friday Agreement. With respect, I've tried to persuade people to, to support the peace process on the basis that although we had to swallow and accept a lot, it was about consensus. That, that our side would be respected, that my identity and tradition would be respected. What did we get in Belfast City Council? My identity and tradition was beaten into the ground by a nationalist majority, Rubbish. aided and abetted by the Rubbish. Alliance Party. Rubbish. That is not... Okay. That is not... Okay. That is not a shared future, Chris, with Just respect. Just let me one, ask that one, is not one a shared second. future. One that second. is not consensus. One second. Okay. Con Colin McDevitt from the SDLP. Of course, you lot wanted to take the flag down completely at Belfast City Hall, didn't you? I think we want to build a shared society. I think, I think the, the answer to that is yes. I think the vast majority of people in Northern Ireland do not want to live in the environment that's been cooked up here tonight. I think the vast majority of people in Northern Ireland want to move beyond the sort of talk that we've reduced ourselves to tonight. Because frankly, this does not represent the future lads. And any of you who are per thinking that you build a political career out of this, you might get a surprise at the ballot box. I'd like you to join the political class and get off the streets, because there's no votes in the streets. And that's just the fact of the matter, right? Now, the way we'll move forward, the way we'll move forward, there's no getting away you from this. You don't believe in the right to peaceful way, protest? Do you, the sorry, oh, you don't sorry, believe in the right to peaceful protest? peaceful protest? In this region, there are a the lot, there are a lot, we have, there are a lot we of have, genuine we people have, we out have, on the streets who, who believe well, in peaceful protest. There, there are people involved in violence, but you cannot generalise like that. We, we, we are making headlines around the world. There are investors leaving this place. There are people who wanted to come here and create jobs and spend money saying no, not because of a decision that was taken in City Hall, but because of the way people have chosen to abuse their right to protest and bring violence onto the streets and of we, this part of our okay. No, no, you asked me about City Hall. We believe simply, all right, and there's no threat to anyone in this, there's no threat to anyone's identity, to my Irishness, to your Britishness, to those people who feel that they're Northern Irish. We believe that when you have civic places, Places that belong to everyone, and this place belongs to everyone. I have to say this to you lads, respecting who you are, it belongs to everyone, that there should either be no flags, or there should be a shared flag, or there should be two flags. And our, our door will remain open 
to everyone okay. forever. Okay. 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 No, I'm getting, get, get, I'm getting paid. Get paid. Jim, 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 you have to accept who I am. I get I paid. I get paid to represent the people who elect me. The people who You're elect me. You're paid by the British government. The people. Yeah. You're paid by the British government. You're paid by the British government. The people who elect yes. me, Jim, can I answer listen this question? To him. Listen to him. The people who elect me may be British, they may be Irish, they may actually opt out and say, Do you know something? I'm not interested in that, I'm Northern Irish. But they're the people I represent. Okay. And I don't represent them. To reduce then flags, remember to reduce okay. politics okay. I around promise, here, remember I, where you I, 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 I promised I wanted to, this to give as many voices to that page in this too. audience you really do. as possible tonight. There's a, a young man in the very front row here, in the very front row. Let me just wait until we get a camera to you. Jerry, the point you said earlier on, people fought and died for tricolour, right? I agree with that, yes, totally. Fair enough, they did. Whether the cause is right or wrong, it's not for me to say. But at the same time, what you don't seem to realise, People fought and died for the Union flag, and they're still fighting and dying for the Union flag. Can I just can I just understand please, Stephen, please don't interrupt me. You okay. told me you wouldn't interrupt me. Uh, okay. So please here's don't. what I just here's no, what I, no, no, no. Here, here's what I want to understand. Me. Tell me why the I'm flag is so important to you. Tell him why. Because people have, are still fighting and dying for that flag. People aren't dying anymore for the or they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be down flat flag anymore. They're terrorists. You were a terrorist. You freely admit that. And you're saying. Can I just say that? No, 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 when you say the people have fought and died for that flag, all right? How old are you? They still are. Okay, how old are you? How old are you? Twenty. All right. What is important to you about Northern Ireland in terms of your identity? Tell me what is in your, your gut about what's important in your life. It's British. You don't see Scotland. They don't get their flag removed, do they? Dublin. You fly a tricolour in Dublin. Why? Because it's the Irish flag. That's the British flag. And you've took it down. How dare you? How dare you? Now listen to what he's going to say to you. How dare you agree with it, David? You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, traitor. Well, you really should. Yeah. No, no, no. Listen, he's not no. a traitor. He's not. He's... Listen no. to what he's got to say to you. Just yeah. listen. See, I have to put this back to you. You know, you give an articulate version of your Britishness, and, and I accept it. And I'm not trying to do away with your Britishness. You may not, you may not believe it, but just, just let me finish, right? I accept your Britishness. Well, but this, you but, 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 let, but let me finish. I, you know, I didn't interrupt you. You'll not be happy. I didn't, but I didn't listen, interrupt you. You listen, need to let me, I didn't listen, interrupt listen, you. You need to let me finish. You ask questions, so let me finish. Listen. Right? You believe in your Britishness. I believe in my Irishness. We're in a part of Ireland, or from your point of view, let me say, or from, or from your point of view, within uh, uh, the UK jurisdiction. That's fair enough. But, but, but that is precisely that is precisely the point. This is a contested area. I want the United Ireland. I will continue to struggle for United Ireland. Never, 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 that's okay. Never, never. That's okay. But I've been very upfront about it. Right? People are like me uh, on the basis of that analysis. Right? So you need, I don't mean you personally, but the politicians and others need to try. And I know it's hard. But they need to try and put themselves, okay. as I try and put myself in your shoes, you need to try and put yourselves in the nationalist shoes, okay. which is... Where is, where is their loyalty? I will never I'll put write, myself I'll in for their loyalty. What has not been talked about? What has not been right. talked about by Jeffrey or anybody in the audience tonight is how do you respect and how do you reach out? Uh, to nationalists and republicans. Well, then, How do you do it? Estimate. Because, because mm -hmm. you're demanding of me that I reach out, and I will and not do. Just, no, not just but it has to be both ways. Yes, okay. Okay. It has to be both okay. ways. Okay. Answer where's, me this, where's then, Michael, please. One second. Where's, where's, this where's, Michael, where's Michael Dean uh, tonight? Yeah. Michael, you're, you're a prominent businessman in Northern Ireland. Give me your sense. Give me your sense. Do you know what? You've had a good say. You, we will come back to more people in this audience, but for goodness sake, don't try to hijack the show. All right? Okay. Michael Dean, your assessment of what is actually happening to the economy and the business in Northern Ireland? I see Belfast very much a city without a rudder. If I could sort of make that first point. Um, talking about the City Council, what you brought to our door, 
I think should be taken right back again. I think it's ridiculous the decision about the flag was made on the 3rd of December going forward. It's been absolutely ridiculous. The economic doom and gloom that we have, it's a numbers game. But I do not think that the leadership knows anything about numbers. I don't think we know how to add this up. Um, the tit-for-tat -tat politics is obviously going to go on and on forever. I can see people frustrated in here tonight. We as a business community are very, very, very frustrated. We don't know the way forward. We were spent some time yesterday with Lord Mayor in the City Hall. But is it really at a critical level? It is, yeah. I mean, we, we spoke today. And Beyond Europe, the recession, though, is, it, are, is, uh, is what is happening in the tension in Northern Ireland having a direct impact on business? Are people going to lose jobs? I think, I think the comments yeah, that made Mr. Sense. Wilson helped made yesterday about recession having anything to do with this, it's nothing to do with this at all. I mean, most businesses are down between 30, 40, 50 percent. There's people now trying to, are, are having to lay people off. Um, it, it, it's sad. I feel sorry for, for Northern Ireland. I feel sorry for all these guys here tonight who have a, a, Protestant, a, a Protestant background, a Catholic background, whatever. But, you know, we're looking into a black hole here. And, I mean, I feel disappointed with the leadership of Stormont and, and, and City Hall. Jimmy Bryson, you say you love Northern Ireland. How do you feel when you hear a businessman tell you how much this is damaging trade? Let's be clear, Steve. When these protests started, the people never shed out to damage anybody's business. But let's be clear who brought this issue in the mouth of Christmas, as a man said here. Sinn Féin, aided and abetted by the Alliance, brought this issue in the mouth. Not the protesters. But we're coming up to the end no, of no, January no, no, hold now, on, Jimmy, hold aren't on, we? Stephen. We're beyond so, Christmas. Yeah, Stephen, the protesters will not be held to ransom by anybody. Uh, you know, we have a peaceful right to, to protest, and we will continue to do that. Now, I want to make a point to what... Uh, this no man matter what goes to the economy. Yeah. No, this man here referred, you know, the, we need to enter the political class, and Chris here talked about we need to be educated. See the notion that young Protestants need to be educated or some, some class thing? It's absolute nonsense, because see the young Protestants, we are educated out of this, and we will be moving forward, and we will be challenging these things politically. So, so, so Jerry, so see so in the next the 10 years, you'll be challenged. Jerry, 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 you're not being, I, I don't mean to be funny, uh, Jamie, but if, if you think about politics, it'll not be Jerry or I, you'll be taking votes off, it'll be this man here, Okay, so if you're going to pick a fight, no, that's going to we'll be challenging no, no, you. But no, no. But if you're going to pick a fight that's going to win you votes, just because the way our society me, works, it'll be his either. party you'll be after, and their votes. No, I think it'll be that party no. we'll be after uh, well, because they not. have order. <laughs> they have order, councillors, and you just guys, and they have made the biggest political mistake of our lives. Okay. The Alliance well, Party have made the biggest political Jerry mistake Lynch. of their lives. Well, well, all Jim, of their councillors, all of their councillors sit Jim, and you uh, areas, Jim, and you have made Jim, the biggest political mistake Jim, of your okay. life. Because I know Jim, people who organise protests no, 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 and meetings who were Alliance supporters and told me never again. Jim. There was protest votes the last time. Right. Want the Alliance? Jim, David so Ford is going to respond to this. David Ford. David Ford. We will suffer. Let's be realistic about what happened and the kind of language that Jeff has used about rights being trampled on or the kind of allegations that Jim's being made about unionism are simply not true. I do not see how flying the flag respectfully on the city hall on a certain number of designated days is trampling on anybody's rights. It's a recognition of the reality of a divided city. But what's been said by Jim has actually put his finger on it because this is all about what happened when Naomi Long won the Westminster <laughs> seat at the general election. Nonsense. And that's why we Nonsense, saw the 40,000 bogus leaflets. We've got 16,000 votes in his belt And that's why we saw the 40,000 bogus leaflets Rubbish. targeting Naomi Long, Steve, who isn't a city councillor because she's been elected to Westminster. And this is what it's all about, hyping up of tensions by DUP and Ulster Unionist okay. politicians who didn't even admit it was them until okay. they were caught on camera okay. distributing them. I, 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 Jeffrey, I'll let you respond very quickly. Well, two things. First of all, um, how does it impinge on anyone's right that a flag flies on a flagpole any day of the year, David? Consult the Secondly, Equality Commission, Jeffrey, and they'll did, give you the we answer. We did, David, and, yes, the and, equality, we know, and we know the result. The Equality, the equality Commission, Commission is given clear. In Lisburn and Belfast Sorry, and other places. The Equality Commission is clear, David, and I have read it, and you should read it as well. And I have and read it, it says too, Jeffrey. That it, is not, not it is not contrary to equality policy to fly the national flag on a civic building. That is what the Equality Commission has said. And the Equality Commission and makes it David, quite clear what as, is the preferred arrangement of designated David days for East and Belfast, where it is in terms of workplace. As for East Belfast, let me remind you that in the 2011 Assembly election, one year after Naomi Long was elected the MP, 
The DUP got 44% of the vote in East Belfast. The Alliance Party got 26%. David, you are deluding yourself. If you think yeah. that we need to deliver yeah, leaflets cuts. to win back East Belfast, okay, well. that is not what this We're, is about. Okay. It, is about okay. it, is about, okay. it is about respect for both sides You've of the community, this. David. Where's and Willie it's time Ward the Alliance tonight? learned that. And Willie Ward, I want to I I I talk about the violence in the Short Strand area as well. Will, Willie Ward, yeah. tell yeah. me what happened to you. What did you see? Well, Stephen, I, I represent the Catholic community within the Short Strand. I represent our church, and I speak for it. Uh, on Monday night, I was at work, and I got a phone call just before quarter past seven that there was an incident outside the church. I arrived outside our church within 30 seconds of getting that phone call. When I arrived there, I knew that there was a special needs group of children in the hall. And, and when I arrived there, I seen a group of loyalists on the Newton Hours Road, petrol bombing the front of the church, and throwing petrol bombs by way of the lawn over into Strand Walk and into uh, St Matthew's Court. Now, I have listened, and they're talking about equality here. A democratic vote was taken in the City Council for, to have a designated days for the flag. I just want to let the people on Newton Ards Road know it wasn't the people of St Matthew's parties that done that. And I want to ask them why they're attacking our church, which they did. And I admired Jim for calling it on the night as it happened. And if, if he has any inf influence in the Newton Ards Road or the Albert Bridge Road, I believe a way to stop all this interface problem is to remove the protests away from the interface. We have had 16 illegal parades around our area. And he says most of these parades in the city have been okay. peaceful. And that, the majority of those parades have caused violence on my okay. community. And that brings us on, doesn't it? That brings us on. It, it, it brings us on to the territory. It brings us on to the territory of how do we get out of this? How do we reach agreement for all of us in this country to try to bring an end to this, to try to calm the situation down, to take the tension out, to take, to take the tension out, one second, so that we are compromising with each other, so that we're living in a country where we're all safe? Well, Stephen. Jerry Lynch, what do you think? What, what, what needs to happen in terms of political leadership? I think we maybe need to look at what Basil McRae said a few weeks ago. At the minute, some councils fly on designated days, including Jeffrey is making this up. I mean, including Lisburn, including Balamoney, including Craig Avon, Dungannon, Armagh, where the DUP is happy with this. Some councils, the more strongly nationalist ones, don't fly it at all. More strongly unionist ones fly it every day. Basil McRae suggests that we need one flag policy for the whole of Northern Ireland. He suggests that designated days, same rules, whether you're in Derry or Newry or Bangor or Carrick. I think that's worth thinking about. I don't know if it's the right answer, but I think these guys should talk. I th excuse me, can I finish, please? I think the other thing we need to think about is having an agreed flag for Northern Ireland that the whole community can accept. Oh, no, and maybe we could fly that every day. Okay, okay. I'm being, I'm I'm sorry, sorry, okay. I'm being okay. shouted down here by these people, Stephen. It's okay. disgraceful. Right. It's right. disgraceful right. that you're allowing. These people are not Democrats. Okay. Let's, to shut let's, down let's, anybody let's who finish, disagrees. Let you finish your point. <laughs> Disgusting. Finish, finish your point, Jay. I, I, my point is, these people are talking about democracy. And and as soon as anybody says anything that disagrees with them in this studio tonight, they shout them down and barrack them. In democracy, everybody has a right to free speech. Okay. Okay. There's a guy up here with your hand up, sir. Yes, in the tracksuit top. Yes, go ahead. Hello. You. Sorry. The guy from St Matthew's Chapel there wants to know why the, the church keeps getting it. What, well, can he answer why the, the, the residents of Short Strand keep using that as their base? The attack from Uh, in St Matthew's Church, we have a, C quick for me, a CCTV recording system, and I can bring anyone in and show them past weeks or to whatever date they want, but the cameras have recorded, and I can prove, and I have shown it to your really BBC, not one incident or not one stone has come out of St Matthew's Church. <laughs> There's a lady here with your hand up. Yes, not true. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, you. Not true. yes you. Go ahead. He says not one thing come out of the chapel. Well, I'm from out Nards Road. Don't live in Pip Park. Right? I'm down the other night. <coughs> they were standing clodding from the chapel, petrol bombs, golf balls, stones, everything. Yeah. Okay. 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 
second row. Let's yes, come here. Second row in the back. Thank you. Second row. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I think sir. it's important there, Noel, to realise that this isn't just a flag issue, as everyone's saying. It's, came, it's at the end of a process here that people are feeling let down by their politicians. And it's understandable in a loyalist community why that feeling's coming across. SDLP representative just said there, there's no folks on the ground. On the 24th of uh, January here in the House of Commons, there's a bill going through being debated on the floor for folks at 16. This is going to be something that okay. a number of parties have supported, Jeffrey and we need to see okay. people Jeffrey getting Donaldson, the ballot papers where, ready and okay. getting people thank, signed up to vote this you. year. Jeffrey Donaldson, where's the First and Deputy First Minister standing together, showing leadership from OFM, DFM here, being seen that both communities' mm. leaders can come together to try to sort this situation out? Why have we not seen them stand together? Has Peter asked Martin? Has Martin asked Peter? Who has said no? Well, I think, Stephen, you'll be aware that um, the leaders of all the parties have been meeting at Stormont um, and indeed... No, the uh, optics of them standing in front of this community, the First and Deputy First Minister, and saying, we together will come up with a compromise on behalf of this country. Why hasn't that happened? Well, it's a pity it didn't happen before Belfast City Council took the decision that they did. Um, Jerry talks about... Why is it not happening now? Well, uh, it happened over Mazarin. Stephen, they are meeting all the time. I just, Why is the country not saying Storm? it? Why does it have to be behind the scenes? It's not behind the scenes, Stephen. And you know well uh, that uh, Peter Robinson is uh, meeting regularly uh, with all of the parties, including Sinn Féin, at Stormont. We, address, just we just can't see Peter issues. and Martin, the First and Deputy First Minister, well, standing together. Stephen, th that isn't going to solve the problem. And if you think that's going to solve the problem, then you haven't been in Northern Ireland over the last and, while. And we do need to get agreement. There's no doubt. Jerry talks about the need for agreement. And we have set up at Stormont... Uh, um, uh, groups to look at these issues. But why are we doing that now? Surely consensus politics, and that's what I signed up to. I want a shared future. I want a Northern Ireland that is peaceful. I want the violence to stop. I want the dissident Republican violence to stop. And when people talk about leadership, I'd like to see more leadership on the nationalist side to bring the dissident violence to an end. Tonight, here. Tonight. On my way to the, to the programme tonight, I turn on my radio, another man shot in Twinbrook. Why aren't we hearing leadership on the nationalist side saying this Jerry must Kelly. come back to Jerry end? Kelly. Uh, Jerry, Jerry Kelly. Uh, from I Jerry Kelly. Want, I want okay. agreement in Northern okay. Ireland. Okay. Uh, we need people All right, to Jeffrey. sit down and work Thank these you. things Jerry Kelly. Well, Jeff, Jeffrey knows, although he's ranting and raving there, knows very well that the dissonance hate me more than they hate him. I mean, I've, I'm the one who's out uh, every time there's an incident uh, condemning it. I'm the one who's taken them on in public. Okay. Uh, d no, condemn it. I'm the one who takes public meetings and takes on people who look upon themselves as distance in the argument. I, there's, a, there's absolutely no problem. Okay. No ambivalence. Sure, no ambivalence. Right, no, 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 Martin McGuinness has been trying to get uh, a, 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 a position where the First and Deputy First Minister come out and stand side by side on this for, from it began. And he did show leadership so at the time saying, of, at the time saying, of Mazarin. Specific well, question. Well, are, are you saying that Martin McGuinness has asked to stand publicly over this issue, absolutely. shoulder to shoulder with Peter absolutely. Robinson, and he's refused? Well, he's, 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 he has asked, and it hasn't happened. No. What, what has happened is there has been... He's uh, asked who? He has asked... Uh, um, Peter Ramsey, uh, he, he uh, as, as I left to come down here, okay. there is a meeting going on. All right. It is all the party leaders. Yep. There was a meeting of all the party leaders yesterday. That's what Martin McGuinness was, was uh, trying to do. He has said publicly, listen to him publicly, he has said okay. what we need right. is a unified okay. front. But, it ha but, but I agree with you, it has to be seen. Okay, we're going to have to continue this debate on the radio. Here's all I will say to every single one of you in this studio and indeed at home. Um, I will do my best, and I'm sure other journalists across the board will do their best to give you a voice. And please use the platforms that you have to have your voice heard. And let's do it democratically. And ladies and gentlemen, please thank our, our panel tonight. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, uh, just before we do move on, here's a quick reminder of how you can get in touch with the programme tonight. Email nolan at bbc.co.uk. You can tweet me at Stephen Nolan. 
It's hashtag BBC Nolan on Twitter, or you can text us 81771. Text will be charged at your standard message rate. Now, here's what actually brings what's happening into, into context tonight. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know what I want? Do you know what I want to do tonight, folks? Do you know what I want to do? I want to talk. We've got about nine minutes left of the program tonight. We've brought guests in of someone who donated his kidney to try to save someone else's life, and I want to bring that story to you and to the people of Northern Ireland. So please let me do it. Just let me do it. Now, most of us would probably stretch to lend our friends a few quid, but what about donating an organ? My next two guests have a remarkable bond, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please welcome our, our guests to the studio tonight. Give them a round of applause. All right. Hello there. Good Hi. to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. It's the GAA All Star Joe Brawley, Shane Finnegan, um, with us uh, the, the, this evening. Um, can you, obviously, we have nine minutes left of the program tonight. Can you just give me a sense if we cut to the chase here? Shane. Just give me a sense of where this story began for you. Well, for me, it began um, coaching in St. Bridget's. Joe and I are, are two fellow coaches, are, are two boys are in the same team which we coach, and our girls are in the same team as well. And it was only after a few months uh, coaching with Joe. Joe and I always seemed to be uh, working together as opposed to with the other coaches. And I didn't even know Joe knew that I had renal failure. And I arrived up one Sunday morning and... Uh, he gave me a bit of a shoulder and he said his exact words were, I believe you need a kidney. He said, I'll give you one. And it was, that was the start of the process. The moment of weakness. <laughs> Why would you do that? Like, it's a nice thing to think about, but to actually do it, to give an organ out of your body to essentially, you know, he wasn't your best mate. You'd known him, what, a year? Why would you do well, that? I've, I've, I've got to know him very well since. And, uh, well, I mean, I think that, I mean, I have five children and... You know, he has young children and, you know, I was conscious that you only need one kidney. And uh, although I didn't know that much about it, you know, I, uh, I could see that it would make an enormous difference to his life if it succeeded. You know, 98% of these living donor transplants, they succeed, you know, and you change people's lives. And it's, you know, it's a small sacrifice. It's not a and, small sacrifice. Well... <clears throat> I'm, start, it's a, it's I'm, amazing I'm starting sacrifice. to realise that, no, well, uh, you'd have to understand, you know, the circumstances came together, you know, I'm, I'm not really saintly material, I've got to say, and, uh, but, you know, for a relatively small sacrifice, you know, to see someone else being given life and his children, you know, having that advantage and, you know, he, he, he's well worth saving and uh, <laughs> I, uh, I just thought it was a, a good idea and then, and you know, it, it became It must have crossed your mind, what if someone from your flesh and blood? What if your, one of your family needed a kidney and you'd given it to someone outside of your family? You'd given your chance away? Well, I have five children, you know, so they could... But, I mean, it's such an unlikely... <laughs> it's, it's, such, it's such an unlikely eventuality. And, you know, it was just a moment in your life where, you know, I thought, well, look, I can, I can do something here. And then the process is fascinating. I mean, it was a voyage of discovery for me. I mean, obviously, it was, you know, bitterly disappointing, particularly from Shane's perspective, because everyone was so optimistic about it, and you know, the experts had yeah. said, you know, it was so disappointing that it failed. But I, I mean, I would do it again tomorrow because it's a, it's an amazing life experience apart well, from anything else. You know, during the first, the, the majority of this program tonight, we've we've been kind of there's a lot of tension, and we've been kind of teasing with each other, teasing it out with each other as to how much are we prepared to compromise and what are we prepared to do as human beings in terms of understanding someone else or not understanding someone else. What does it actually mean when someone is as gracious as that? What does it feel like when another human being does that? Funny, myself and, and my wife were talking about this last night, trying to find the superlatives for the words. And, you know, you just can't find them, you know, compassion, empathy. You put all those words together and it's, it's, still, it's still not enough. It's just incredible. You know, my situation was that there was the potential for a transplant with my sister. Then that fell through and Joe just stepped in up to the plate, you know, 
totally out of the blue, incredibly, not knowing me terribly well, and just, it was just, it was incredible, truly, truly incredible. You felt very special, actually. But it's, it's important to say, you know, and people, I know people think that it's an enormous thing, and, it, you know, it takes three or four months out of your life, and, you know, but it is, you know, whenever I was out there in London and seeing, we, we met some amazing people, you know, just ordinary people, really, but a father, a 40-year-old man who, was, who had donated a kidney to his two-year-old daughter, and within two days, she was, she was walking out of the unit, and, you know, so it's, it's not unique. Another man there, a 20-year-old who was donating to his 50-year-old dad, and, you, you know, the people who are, who are living donors, who I've met since then, they all walk on air for the rest of their lives because they've saved someone's life. So it's a brilliant thing, you know. Initially, the transplant was successful. Yeah. But what has happened after that? Well, it was successful for a number of days. And then um, after a few days, one of the doctors came in and, and my results started to, to taper off. Um, and after, after that, really, there was a process of trying to investigate what the problem was, and that, that went on for a period of time. And then they opened me up and they realised that, you know, it, it had deteriorated and had gone. And so that was a period of just over a week and a half. So, so you had the high and then the low? A high and a low. An incredible high, an incredible bond with Joe that, that will stay with me for the rest of my life. But, uh, yes, then, then obviously there was a, a, a low... Uh, and I, I, alone in the sense that not just for myself, but I really felt it for Joe in terms of the sacrifice that he had made. And where are you left now then? What happens well, now? Listen, I'm a, I'm a strong character, um, resolute, so I'm, I'm back to work. I'm now doing dialysis at home as opposed to doing it at uh, hospital three nights a week. So I come home and I do it after work in the evening and it's better family life. So it, it, in, in one sense there's, there's been an improvement, but obviously I'm looking towards uh, hopefully having a transplant sometime in the near future again. So you need someone else to donate? Yes, um, possibly, or, or get a, a transplant through the, 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 the other system, the, 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 the donor system. Did you feel a, a sense of, of loss when it didn't work? Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a deep experience. It's, you know, nothing can prepare you for it. And they say that to you, you know, look, you're just going to have to roll with the punches when it happens. And whenever I mean, we were in the beds beside each other, so... One minute, you know, he's, he was looking haggard and very, very... You mean the beds beside each other? Like, yeah, we had, right we had a single beds other. beside each other in the hospital. That's what they do with the donor and recipient. No. Oh, why? And then whenever he'd got it, and he, you know, they said it was a big kidney and all, good high capacity. You could just see life just rushing back into him in those five, six days. And every day he was getting better. I mean, he, he peed for the first time in, what, six years? <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's true, small things. You I know, told you not to say that, Joe. You can't, you know, <laughs> You'll notice, that, you'll, you'll notice that Shane doesn't drink the water because his fluid circulates in his bloodstream so that his urine circulates in his bloodstream. It, you know, his bladder doesn't work, so he's got to go on a, a dialysis machine, which is an artificial kidney. And the thing about it is that if, if, if everyone went on the donor register, because, you know, people think it's a great idea. Sure, of course, whenever I'm gone, you know, if, if anything happens to me, God forbid, of course I'd love to give someone else life. But we just don't get around to filling out the the donor cards or telling our family that that's what we want to do. But we saw about, I'd say it was about 10 people, Shane, whenever we were in the unit, we were there for about 10 days. We saw about 10 people just get a call at the last minute. Some family had decided to allow their teenage son's organs to be used yeah. or their daughter's organs to be used in terribly difficult circumstances. Yeah. And as a result of that, people were given life. And we saw them coming in. Yeah. The, the kidneys were coming in in like Marks and Spencer's freezer boxes. Someone was being brought in, and you know, this is a person who has died. A, a person was being brought in who was going to die otherwise on a waiting list. 10% of people die on the waiting list. And within two days, they were leaving the hospital, they were hugging the nurses, they were going off to a new life. So for such a small sacrifice on your part to fill out the donor register, it was a totally life-changing experience. It was devastating. It's clearly profoundly affected you. Yeah. Well, I, I think that that's right, you know, and I'm just adjusting to that, you know, but I mean, obviously it would be totally different if it had been successful because the living donors report feeling euphoria for the rest of their lives and don't forget 98% of them succeed. I mean, we can, were just in the can, miserable 2%. You can, know? I, can I just say thank you so, so much for coming into the programme tonight? Because pleasure. You've made me thank, thank you and I wish you all the best. Thank, thank you. you. Give them a round of applause. All right. Listen.
I want to keep my promise to you. We will continue to talk about whatever you in this community want to talk about on the radio tomorrow morning. We start at Radio Ulster at 9 o'clock. Thank you for your company. Night-night, everybody. Night-night. <laughs>